and I do hope you guys enjoyed your holidays. Welcome back everyone. Okay, so now we gotta go see our genie. See what's up. Oh man. So uh what presents did you guys get? I got uh I got some more money and everything. It was it was cool. It was a great Christmas, you know, spent some time with the family, ate a lot of food and boy was there a lot of food. Let me tell you what. Something's gonna be wrong in the castle. No, I guess not. King Shamir. Ah! I'm glad you're here. I've been hoping to speak with you privately. It's about the stranger. It's funny how he now wants to mention this to me, but okay. Okay. Do you have any information fine. about the stranger? As a matter of fact, I do. A while ago, Alexander learned that Al Hazred was communicating with a group of people. I heard the name Black Cloak Society mentioned often by him when he was my master. Who were these people? There were at least six or seven. Alexander mentioned your family had crossed paths with them at some point Why or didn't another. Why did you mention this last uh -oh. night? I didn't want to alarm anybody. I wanted to make sure that my information was accurate. Black Cloak Society. Do you think it's related to the Cloaked Man? I'm positive. I looked again at some of the letters Alexander once found in Al Hazred's room, and they confirm it. Here, look at these. The first is dated from a few years ago, but the second one arrived in Al Hazred's magical letterbox just after he was captured. Alexander had hoped to use it to learn more, but the magical letterbox stopped working shortly after that. To the brothers and sisters of the Black Cloak Society, I am sure you all have questions about this mysterious, mysterious voice speaking to you in dreams, as I once had. Okay. Fear it not, friends. It is the voice of our mighty leader, who is now preparing to walk among us once more. The time is drawing near. The prison that holds him is weakening, and it is now that we must join our forces and tip fate in our favor for the triumphant return of the Black Cloak Society to its former glory. We must not lower our guard, however. All signs seem to point to the return of the Silver Cloaks as well, but years ago we made every effort and sacrifice required of us to set in motion events that will lead to our victory. Even now, I have in my grasp one of the prophesied children. But we do not yet have everything we need. Now more than ever, we must find the location of the box. Sister Lelote is sparing no efforts to find its rumored location in Tamir. To the return of the Black Cloak Society, may you all be in shadows. Manana. Oh. <laughs> Brother Alhazred, I received your letter that Prince Alexander Sandra of Daventry has journeyed to, has journey to your little island kingdom, and I write to you in haste. Though he may be a threat to your plans, you must not kill the boy. He is essential to our master's plan and the return to glory of the Black Cloak Society. Be wary. He is an intelligent young man and versed in magic. He is the same slave Gwydion who escaped Mananan years ago by turning one of his own spells upon him. To underestimate him would be foolish. 
and you must exercise caution and restraint in this situation, Alhazred. Reply the acknowledgement as soon as you can. May you be in shadows, Agatha. Brother Alhazred, I received your letter that Prince Alexander... What? No, I didn't. This is grave news, Agatha. That's the vile witch who kidnapped Valenice and locked her in a tower in Kalima. We never knew what happened to her. And Mananan. That's the blaggard who stole Alexander when he was just an infant. He's the reason why Valenice and I spent so many sleepless nights worrying about our son. Do you think he was the one at the wedding? I don't see how he could be. The last I knew of him, he was stuck in the form of a cat as the result of a spell Alexander had cast on him. Do you know who this leader he speaks of might be? I don't, but Alexander has been investigating this for some time. There is one name I can't recall, and I've been looking for this letter all over the place. It was received by Alhazred during the time I was under his command. I will look through Alexander's notes and see what I can make of it, Your Highness. Perhaps the answers are in front of us yet. Thank you. And Shamir? Yes? Do not mention any of this to anyone. Especially not to my wife. This letter from Hagatha would only upset her, as would the one from Manana. Until we know more, I don't wish to burden her or the rest of my family further. My lips are sealed, sire. Uh, stop. A very strange storm took over the aisles last night. I know. We felt it here, too. It was unnatural. Something happened last night, something big, and I don't know what it was. Let me know if you find the cause. I shall, sire. The Black Cloak Society. So, what is this Black Cloak Society? A thousand years ago, there existed a dark cult of the worst and most evil wizards in the world. A despicable force that grew stronger with each passing year. At first, they only caused minor problems, but they steadily became a stronger force and a menace to all the known lands. And they still exist to this day? I believe Alexander mentioned them once or twice now that I think of it, but he never told me much about it. What's more interesting is how they formed and where they drew their name from. You saw how in the letter he mentions the Silver Cloaks? They were another society that was even more secretive. There is almost no mention of them at all in any of the records I've been able to find. I didn't make the connection until I came across an ancient tome in a library far from here. The Silver Cloak Society was formed by some of the wisest and most noble wizards, the perfect antithesis to the Black Cloaks. Who exactly were these Silver Cloaks? I'm not completely sure, but I do know they were masters of a lost form of magic that controls dreams. Like the spell the Archdruid told me about. Not exactly. The Silver Cloaks could not only control dreams, but they could shape them into whatever they wished. They could drag people into the dream world and even make dreams appear around us in the waking world. The tome implied that the most powerful of them could even form reality from dreams themselves. Making dreams come true? And real? Is that even possible? I've heard of myths and legends that speak of magic that deals with dreams, but even to us genies, it's a mystery. And we've been around for more years than you can count. The spell you carry now is one I've never seen before. With almost no records of the Silver Cloaks existing at all, it's clear they were very secretive, but also that they were a force of good. So they were essentially two societies at war? It runs deeper than that. But yes, there was a war between them. Uh, so uh, what happened at the end of the war? In due time, sire. First go back to the beginning. There was a society of dark wizards that wanted nothing more than power. It turned some of them into dark beasts, inhuman walking shadows. With this power, they ravaged the lands, killed innocents, brought suffering everywhere they went. That was the beginning of the war, and by all accounts, it was truly devastating. But the Silver Cloaks were wise, and they crafted a weapon that trapped the shadows and sealed them away forever. And so they defeated them? I'm not sure. That's where the trail runs cold. There are no records of the war, the Silver Cloaks or the Black Cloaks after that. 
It's as if they all just vanished. Something must have happened, but I don't know what. I'm not sure anyone does. This is an interesting story, but it doesn't explain why that stranger or this Black Cloak Society would want to curse my children. It has everything to do with them, sire. The artifact the Silver Cloaks used to defeat the Dark Wizard the first time around was called Pandora's Box. Really? Rosella found it in Tamir. The box mentioned in the letter is the one in the singer. Exactly. They must be seeking Pandora's box once again. But why? What exactly did this artifact do? I'm not sure exactly how it worked, but somehow they did use it to trap the shadows inside. And there are no records that say what happened to it after it was used. Yet somehow it ended up in Tamir. And Rosella found it there. Well, look, needed her help to do so. But Rosella stopped her before she could give it to the others, and then locked the box up again. If what you say is true, then this box, it can never be opened again. I shudder to think what the consequences of such an action would be. You must stop this man from finding it. First I must save my children, then I'll deal with that. I get the feeling that in order to accomplish the first, you may find you'll have to do the latter as well. That may be the case. Thank you. And again, let's keep this between us until we know more. This is good information, but without anything more current, I don't know that we can use any of it. Uh, goodbye. I should get back to my quest. Good luck, sire. I will continue researching. Oh, guys, come on. For a free game, this is, this is kind of epic. I mean, I have no idea what to do. <laughs> Do know, cause you're supposed to give me some kind of magical item or something, but hey, hey. Graham considers it, but what? then decides not to. No, I wanna look at it. That won't work, but keep trying. What? No. If it makes you feel any better, I would have tried that too, but then we'd both be wrong. No, I wanted to look at it. Oh. oh. <laughs> okay. I need a magical bag. How am I gonna find a magical bag? Oh, you know what? I probably had to read. Ah, read one of the books in the bookstore. Uh, come on, Graham. Wait, what's that? What? What? Who? Oh, it's you, King Graham. Did Did you make it back all right? Sun is up already. What time is it? Mid morning. Well, no wonder. I stayed with Rosella until the storm passed. Then I came here. Wandering in the memories of what could have been is only going to make things worse for you. I can't help it. Besides, it's not going to make it any easier if I'm somewhere else. Rosella is still under that spell, no matter where I am. It's not where you physically are, but where your heart is that matters. You have to believe. I'm trying. Uh Huh. Well, oh, damn, I have to cut cut off soon. Um Yeah, well Edgar, I... you met the same fate as my son. You were taken from your family when you were an infant and raised by someone who wasn't your mother. How did it feel? Uh why don't you ask your son? It's not that I couldn't tell you, but... Because Alexander, he doesn't talk much about it. I don't know if I should say this, but it's funny that you mentioned that. Why? I don't know. I won't let him know. Well, I guess it wouldn't do any harm. A couple of days ago, it was late at night, and Rosella and Casima were busy with the wedding dress and all that. So I walked to the beach, and Alexander was there, swimming in the sea. He didn't have his shirt on, and I saw these... Scars on his back. I'm gonna do a quick cut, Scars. everyone. Heavens. So, um, 
Yeah. Did he notice you there? 